What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So I've got my handy Spring Security Context architecture map out and we are going to be once again implementing another user detail service. And this is going to be an actual implementation. We are going to use user detail service as an interface to pretty much create our own version, our own custom user detail service that will utilize this very special method called load user by username. And if you watched my previous video on user detail service, when we use the user detail service, it's going to go into the database. And what's going to happen is it's, if it finds a user, it will return it in the form of a user details. So user details, and you will notice this when you actually code it, is going to be an object representation of an actual user. So it may be a little confusing. If that confuses you a little bit, don't worry because you will quickly understand what's going on. Just kind of realize where we're at in the diagram and the actual interface we're going to implement and it will all make sense. Okay, so I'm in my project here and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into my security folder and I am going to add a Java class called, what do you know, a custom user details service. And just like I mentioned before, what we want to do is we don't want to use the implementation that is provided by Spring Security. We want to create our own. And in doing so, we're going to bring in our uh, user detail service we're going to go over to our light bulb here and we're going to implement the load user by user username. And just to solidify what we're learning here, just pay attention. We're returning a user details. If you, if you were paying attention to the last part, which I'm pretty sure that you were, it wasn't that complicated. We're going into the database. We need this user details service. We need to return a user details and implementing this interface is going to allow us to do this. Okay, so let's go in here. First thing that I want to do is I want to bring in the actual user repository that we coded up. Also, let's go and make sure to have our service up here. Make sure you add your service, otherwise it won't work. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to implement user repository. So got that user repository we just created. I'm gonna go here, got the user repository right here. Also, I'm going to need to provide constructor injection. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but this is the official way. So try to keep things pretty official. Okay, so got, got our auto wired and it looks like it brought in our user repository just like we needed it. So let's go ahead and start coding up our actual uh, load by username. And what we're gonna do is we want to go into the database and into our user repository and actually return a user. And I'm going to make sure I bring in my user entity right here. And we're going to use our find by username. So find by username and pass in our username. Then we will have an or else throw right here. And luckily we have a nice exception that is already provided for us. So we can um, use one. We don't have to actually go into the actual global exception handler and create our own. We can just create one that is already provided for us. So username not found. That looks good. Now what we want to do is we want to return a new user. And this user is going to be a user detail. So we go here, go user and make sure we bring this in. Make sure that you get the right one. If you named your user entity just user and not user entity it could get them uh confused so if you did that make sure you fully qualify it if you did so here so we're gonna go get username then we're gonna get our user dot get password then here we need to pass in our user dot get roles so we go here so we're gonna pass in our roles but you notice that there's a red squiggly line here. What is going on is that this, and this kind of goes back to our previous, when we were talking about users and roles. Granted authorities, we need to pass in granted authorities, but these are actually roles. 
And what you will come to find out about granted authorities is that they're actually housed within roles. Granted authorities are a more granular form of roles. So being that we can't pass in our roles here, we actually need to convert these into granted authorities. We need to essentially convert our roles into granted authorities. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to have a collection. And this is going to be a granted authority. And I'm using a very broad form of uh, type checking here collection you i'm sure that you could use another type here but i'm going to use collection because it's very broad and i don't want to risk that there be maybe some other type in here being thrown in there and it breaks so i'm going to go here and i'm going to say map roles to authorities authorities and going to pass in a list role and have a roles right here so next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to map over these. So just turn all these roles into a stream. So import class. And make sure to import that list so we get everything. So once again, turn this into a stream. Then we're going to map over it. And but just to map over it, what we are going to do is we're going to take our role. And for each one, we are going to turn them once again into authority. So we're going to use a simple author simple granted authority class and pass in each role dot get name. Let me see here. And then go here and then turn it into a list that we can then pass in to what we have up here. So here, map roles to authorities. Just like that. And make sure to have our user here okay so that mo looks pretty much good to go next what we need to do is we actually need to bring this into our security config and by doing so uh we are going to inject it so go into our custom authority right here so our custom user details and the amazing thing about spring today is that it automatically detects this somehow. I don't know exactly how it detects it, but it automatically wires all of this up for you. And we are also going to wire up our authentication manager. And being that it's so easy to do, we even though we are going to implement an authentication manager, it is super easy. So I talked about how we're not actually going to even mess with our authentic authentication provider right now, but our authentication manager is going to be one line of code it's going to do everything for us and spring security is actually going to wire up anything else and that kind of just shows you how far that Sp spring security has advanced to where we don't have to worry about like a lot of this stuff okay so i'm going to go into here I'm going to bring in the custom user details then make sure make sure we got to auto wire so we're going to go auto wired okay so that looks great and we've got everything permitted all. And what I am going to do right now is I'm going to turn this into authenticated. It's going to, we still have a couple more things to do before we'll actually be able to test this. But here in a second, we will be able to actually start utilizing our uh, actual endpoints. We just had to build them first. We don't have anything to actually authenticate off of because we don't have any endpoints, but we will here in the next video, I believe. So here, so once again, we're bringing in our authentication manager, authentication manager. Then we're going to pass it in, or we're going to have this param called authentication configuration. So authentication configuration. And within here, we just need to have our throws and this is going to throw an exception. So we'll say throw exception, just like this. And all we're going to have to do within here is return our authentication configuration. So authentication configuration dot git. And need to make sure to bring this in. 
and we are going to bring in our authentication git manager or git authentication manager okay so while we're here let's go ahead also and bring in our password encoder so if you don't know what a password encoder is if you store plain text passwords in 2020 that is a very very bad idea because people can break into your database so we have this thing called a password encoder that is going to make it so that whenever you store data or whenever you store passwords in a database, it stores them not as the actual password, it stores them as string, unintelligible strings so that if anybody were able to ever break into our database, what will happen is they would not be able to uh, get the passwords that easily. They would have to essentially use really sophisticated algorithms to try to decode AK, uh, hence encode, they're trying to decode these passwords so that you won't be able to actually use them if the um, database was ever breached. And luckily we don't have to worry about a lot of that. Only thing that we have to do is worry about our password encoder. And we're gonna be using bcrypt password encoder. Spring security takes care of pretty much all of it. You don't have to worry about it so much. And uh, it takes it takes a lot of the actual legwork out of uh, making sure that the passwords are actually encoded. Anyways, that's going to be the video for today. Next video, we are going to be working on the registration endpoints. And after that, we are going to be building the JWT. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.